Hey everybody, this is Christine DeGraff. Welcome to TNT Bootcamp with myself and my co-host, Ronnie Bincer. Hey Ronnie, how are you today? I am doing well. I'm looking forward to our show with Stefan today. Absolutely. Yes, um, Stefan actually was like, he is, I have to say, he is my Google Plus guru. Um, ever since I first got here, you know, about two years ago, I have learned so much from him. Um, you know, from everything from, you know, optimizing your hover card to what, what really got me excited is um, showing me, you know, how brand pages could be used as content curation pages, which was when I started my music hangout. So I kind of almost feel like um, if it wasn't for Stefan, I don't know that I would have the My Music Hangout channel right now. I probably um, would have just kept sharing music on my page and it never would have became kind of like a brand. So thank you. That was uh, great advice. And um, he has a whole series of books, um, the Google Plus Pro Tip series. Um, if you haven't read them yet, I really suggest that you do. Um, there's some terrific tips in there. Um, very actionable, very goal-oriented. Um, he is also the owner of Shovey Websites. Is that correct? That's it. Yeah, and, and we, we turned 15 in March. Very wow. exciting. Full-time passion for a long time. Part-time business for part of it. And uh, it's been over 10 years now. So, But, uh, yeah, very excited. Good stuff. Well, thank you. Well, welcome, and we're glad you're here. And uh, I think we're going to start off with some questions. Yeah, let me bring one up. Stefan, first off, am I pronouncing your name right? Stepan. Yep, that's me. I, should, I get it wrong all the time. <laughs> okay. Next one, which has a little bit more depth to it, is <laughs> I know that you are a fan of helping businesses make good use of their times and, and get value out of what they're trying to do online. But there's a big factor, I think, that you kind of point a lot of people to when you're first talking to them, and I think it has to do with goals. So could you talk to us about what goals are and what they mean to a business when they talk to you? Yeah, totally, and, and it, I'm so happy you brought that up, Ronnie. Um, quick sidebar, I did end up, and, and you cracked me up when you said it, um, about pronouncing my name. I, I have a site that I've been building out lately, stepanhove.com. I've had it for a while, finally, you know, took the time to get the shoemaker's children some shoes. And uh, I decided to record my name, put it on SoundCloud, and then embed it on that on my page. So anybody who has a has me on a hangout now has a little way to listen to me uh, actually, you know, pronounce my name, which is kind of funny because I listen to it. I'm like, God, this is so dumb. But I guess it's helpful. Anyway, um, yeah, so about goals, right? Here's the thing. And, and I... You know, when I work with businesses, it's it's tricky, right? You guys, the three of us, right, we do this stuff for a living. We're in social media. We're in online marketing. We're reading, you know, all of the, the trusted sources and the authoritative people out there that are, that are working with bigger brands and, you know, they're knee-deep in testing and all. So it's great. We're, we're kind of like liaisons in a way to the real world and the real business world. Um, the world where people, you know, their their companies don't have this kind of expertise sitting there at at a desk anywhere. And you know, what I've tried to do for the again 15 years or so I've been doing this is to be that liaison, is to be that sort of trusted source, and to help companies understand that. Listen, if you're going to read somebody, you know, somebody's article about, let's say, the top 10 things you need to do to rock it on Pinterest. You also have to understand what rocking it on Pinterest actually means for your business. So is Pinterest even the right place for you to be on, you know, to spend time to, to actually rock it? Like, and so that comes down to goals. And what we try and do, um, the, the more I'm, you know, trying to convince my clients to, to understand this and adopt it, you know, we're moving past this idea of I just need a website. I need a corporate brochure. You know, everybody today, <clears throat> the... Um, you know, in the online space, the customers, their expectations are changing. They're coming on to uh, the, they're coming on the internet. They're searching you. They're devouring a ton of your content before they even like make the first contact, before they even hook up with you on, on any social media or join your email list or make a phone call. So if you aren't cognizant of that, then you're putting efforts out there and you don't know whether or not they're going to, you know, hit that nerve with those people. And so that's what I try and do. To try and say, all right, there's all these tools out there. There's all these ideas, tips, techniques, tricks, whatever, all these social channels that we can participate in. But how are any of them actually going to help you and your business? What kind of audience is on these things? 
and we start to get into a discussion that, you know, whether it's building a website or an email campaign or, you know, a more comprehensive social strategy, content marketing, whatever, you at least know what you're supposed to get out of this thing and whether or not that effort, you know, where, where's the best place to spend that effort? So it's kind of a long-winded answer. I apologize for that. But um, it really does come down to understanding what you want out of all this. Otherwise, it's a big time suck and, you know, and a resource hog. So you mentioned that. Yeah, you mentioned the idea of the goal needs to be for you and your business, not just somebody else's goal. How do you help a business work through what that is? I think the easiest way to do it is with pain points. Look at your, and, you know, I'm not the only one to say this, right? <laughs> you know, uh, if you read, like, Jay Bayer's utility book, um, he touches on this. There's, there's a, a bunch of people that touch on this, and, and it's a great, Point. I mean, with inbound marketing, which is creating content and social media and things like that, that help that passive user become a fan and become educated about your business and then ultimately want to contact you, right? So, and then that honestly, that is the way to move. Well, it's not the only way to move, but that is one of the ways to move in the direction uh, for your online marketing because you can invest in that, you know, once, twice maybe, but you don't have, unlike advertising where you have to, you know, you got to, ante up every single day to display those ads. So it's a little more cost effective, a little more long term um, to do all that inbound stuff. So, you know, trying to understand what goals are right for you, um, it really comes down to understanding who your buyer is and where you can be the, where you can bring the greatest value to them in the different stages of their buying cycle. So if there's somebody who you know, um, uh, there's there's a great chart, and I can't remember it. I'll try and find it. If, if I can find it, I'll put it in the event comments. But um, there's sort of these different phases where people would, you know, want to buy from you uh, or at least enter into a business relationship with you. So if you can identify which of those four phases each of that, each piece of content is for, all of your calls to action will sync up a little bit better. All of your, you know, your advertising, where you're spending time on social, all of that's going to sync up a little bit better when you know how you can deliver value to that person, you know, on in wherever wherever you want to deliver value to it. And, you know, again, we're in this mentality, especially on social media, where it's all about giving and giving and giving. And then you have that one ask, that one big, you know, hey, guys, I want you to buy something from me. But you could still totally miss the mark with that if you don't, um, if you aren't positioning yourself in the right way to attract the right kinds of people. So... That's where that's a big part of where those goals and understanding that uh, comes in handy. Does that answer the question? Again, long-winded. Sorry. No, it's good. It's a good one. Christine. Andrew Hatchett says, in other words, don't advertise a funeral home in a bridal magazine. <laughs> Got it, buddy. <laughs> nice. That's the one right there. <laughs> that's perfect. So, are there any particular techniques that you are finding yourself? changing to do now that you maybe didn't do in the past? Yeah, you know what's working really well for me now? Um, and I'm using my own business as an example because, quite honestly, I've been, anybody who's been following me on G Plus the last two years, you know I've kind of gone through a bit of a transition. I was a, started off as a web guy, kind of took hold with all this Google Plus. I'll use Authorship word, stuff. You know, authoritative guru type thing. And that's not me at all. But, um, yeah, I kind of took took to the platform itself as a, as a as whatever. Um, but I do feel, I, I have always felt that Google Plus especially is a, it's a spoke in a wheel, you know. <clears throat> it's a, it's part of your online presence. It's not the only thing you can do out there. There's plenty of other places. So one of the things I've been trying to do for my own business is, and I'm doing this with other clients, so that's where I'm going with this, um, is creating kind of like an interview and saying where you know, let, let's talk about those pain points. Let's talk about where I can deliver the most value to somebody. Let's talk about why they want to leave me and even why they would want to, you know, when, how do they come to me? Why, what's causing them to leave me? You know, trying to figure out all those things. Um, you do a little bit of buyer persona stuff, you know, not too much because that can get a little, little out of hand, uh, especially for small businesses. But if you can answer a lot of those questions and um, you can put it all into like almost an interview for yourself, then you can start to use that as a kind of a, a, a benchmark or a checkpoint for yourself and say, okay, I want to look at Facebook. How does Facebook help me achieve any of these, you know, any of these goals or how does it help me reach certain pain points? Um, 
how can I do that? And maybe I can, maybe I can't, or maybe advertising makes way more sense than a Facebook group. You know what I'm saying? So like, then once you have this kind of a, an, you've kind of interviewed yourself, you understand where your, uh, where your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and again, that also comes down to creating content and things like that. Um, then you can start to, you know, not, instead of throwing darts on a wall, you're placing stickies. You're playing a little, you know, paste, pasting little post-it notes up on the wall in all of the exact places where you know your, your efforts are going to be effective. And uh, so that's been really helpful for me. So you, that, in essence, when, you, when a client comes to you, do you ask them some of these questions that you think they should be asking? Or, or, what, or how do you work that into your flow? Yeah, so first, the first thing we'll do, I want to try and I want to make sure I'm a good fit for, you know, for a company. Um, so a quick little call, you know, 15, 20 minutes, which I always try and stay to, but usually ends up being like 45 minutes to an hour. It is what it is. Um, <laughs> but the idea then is to go through, say, okay, you know, we're, we're going to get started. Great. We probably touched on a few of these things when we were first chatting, but I have a little bit more of a formal interview, if you will, or a kickoff meeting that we're going to have. And we're going to go through some of these questions. Um, some of them are logistical, like what's the best way to get a hold of you? Some of them are, um, you know, some of them are a little bit more narrative, like talk to me about your sales structure, you know, what kind of, what are your ultimate goals, like things like that. So if I go through that whole process, I have it documented, and then everything we do from there on just kind of builds off of that. And my goal at the end of the day, especially when I work with people on strategies, um, the goal at the end of the day is to have really a playbook for yourself to say, all right, I know exactly what I need to do and I know how it's going to affect my business. And the best part about that is anything you go out there and try, you can now go back to, you know, let's say two, three months later and say, all right, did this work? And if it didn't work, that's okay. At least I know it and I can make a change. You can say, why didn't it work? You know, so it, it, it's been extremely helpful. You, you mentioned that one of your um, approaches is to determine if a client is a good fit for you, which is kind of opposite where a lot of people might, you know, the, think that the client is the one driving and trying to determine if you're a good fit for them. Um, so has there been a case where you've turned down a client and um, why and what are you looking for? Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of times it's based off of price. Um, but... And I don't mean to, to sound, you know, elitist or anything in that in that regard, but it I've been doing this for a long time. If you compare me if you're only looking for somebody to build you a WordPress site, I'm not the right guy because you don't have enough you don't value what that WordPress site can do for your business and you're not willing to dedicate the resources to making sure it's going to, you know, stay secure, it's gonna be uh it, it's gonna marry up to your offline marketing and you know, you're gonna be able to create content for it and things like that. If you're not into any of that stuff, then you're going to, I don't know, we're just, I don't want to work for you, work with you, because we're not going to have, I can't give you as much as I want to give you, and you're not going to value it in the first place. So I'd rather build a network of people that I can refer to and say, oh, this person's a good fit. Like, you know, I have a few people that do really, really well with, you know, small, hyper-local websites. And again, not my, you know, it's not the best fit for me, so... I'll say, hey, listen, just go talk to this person. They're the absolute best person to talk to for this. You know, here's roughly their price ranges, but you're going to be in good hands. And, you know, we work out, if we're going to work out a deal, we work out a deal. Usually it's just like I'd rather have a network of people that I can trust and refer people to. And, and same goes with tools and say, you want this, you go here. One of the things um, that in your bio says that you help businesses overcome the challenges of maintaining their online presence effectively. What are some of those um, challenges that you see and how do you help them overcome? I think one of the biggest challenges is knowing is, is what you don't know. It, you know, like I said in the beginning, a lot of these companies, they don't have an in-house marketing expert, online marketing expert. I mean, you know, again, this I'm preaching to the choir with the two of you guys, but you know, SEO, e-commerce, uh, web hosting, you know, the web content, stuff like that, or PR, all of those are, you know, they used to be very, uh, what's the word? They're sort of in their own little worlds. Compartmentalized? What's that? Compartmentalized? That's the word. 
compartmentalized or fragmented. You know, they, they, they fight with each other. There's always somebody trying to one-up the other one. Um, in a larger company, that, that doesn't fly anymore, you know? And the, even smaller cust- you know, smaller businesses, the customers, they don't care anymore. They, the expectation is that this just works and I'm getting, you know, I have a certain experience that I'm, that I'm expecting and uh, you have to deliver it to me or I'm going to find somebody who can. And so, you know, that, that's one of the biggest challenges is anybody who's been working with companies who don't get that and how things are changing, they're, um, they don't know what they don't know yet. And we're still at the beginning of that, let's face it. I mean, you can still probably get away with having three or four different agencies not working together um, for a little bit longer. But then at some point, especially people like myself, I'm realizing a lot of my peers you know, in the, in the web world, um, the ones who have been around long enough, we realize that, wow, there's, there's a lot more that goes along with this than just the SEO or just the, you know, the hosting side of it. Um, and it's mostly just because we have our hands in all of these things since, you know, that's our business, but maybe we never specialized on any of them. We just, you know, again, we just know where to look for all this stuff. We've been following the trends, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, evolution and, and businesses who don't see that and aren't willing to take advantage of that, they're going to, they're not going to be able to sustain any level of success that they have right now. So that's a challenge. It's a very real one. Here's a little bit of a shout out for you saying, <laughs> William's geeking out saying that you are definitely a rock star. He can tell you've been in the industry for a while. Thanks, William. I appreciate it. Love your shirt too in the profile picture. I'm a big fan of Unbounce. Great landing page company. And Iblis Bain says, a good client fit is essential. Don't be afraid to fire clients. If you have to, it's not worth it in the long run. So, Stefan, when a, when a company or a person comes to you and they're asking you questions about the, the idea of not knowing enough that needs to be done, they might not know. How do you say it right? They may not know that they don't know. So how do you go about pointing out to them without overwhelming them and making them just sort of say, I, I guess this isn't for me, there's too much stuff? How do you bring to their attention the things that you know are important, but at the same time they may not value them to the degree they need to. Yeah, th- this is a balancing act. That's so t- t- it's really a balancing act and you know, we're all anybody who's in my position and you too, Ronnie, I'm sure with with the amount of with how overwhelming hangouts can be, right? I'm sure a company will come to you and say, "Yo, I need some help. I hear you're the guy to go to." And you're like, "Yep. All right, you got to do this, 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 and this." But I also know I also know you well enough that you you do tend to spoon feed people and you know the best this is really what it comes down to you know the best practice you know the best approach and if you ask some questions ahead of time and get to know them and their personality and how they make decisions and things like that then you can you can spoon feed them in a way that still makes them feel like they're getting that you're not holding anything back but that you're also um, that they're not going to get overwhelmed um, trust has a lot to do with it I mean really that's that's the thing. It, a lot of it just comes down to, guys, just just trust me. I, I'm like I'm working with a client now where the um, their accountant is like totally overwhelmed with stuff, and you know we're we're doing some online registration uh, and transaction processing for for their website, and she's like, all right, you know this is how I get the information now and whatnot, and I'm like, all right, there's there's a better way to do this, but I kept my mouth shut. I just said, listen, just trust me. I know that when this is all said and done this is what you need and you're going to be happy about it and, and, you know, just hang in there, right? And if you don't like it, I'll change it back. But I knew she was going to like it, you know. I was going to say that too. I think trust is is key. Um, I remember from my web development days, you know, we I would do a website, the client would be happy, they would be getting phone calls, they'd be getting traffic in the door, but then they'd get that email, you know, that you're not number one for this key word. And all of a sudden, you know, um, some of the clients would just, you know, um, delete it because they trusted me. They knew I was doing a good job. But then other ones, you know, they'd come to me and say, okay, what's wrong here? Why am I not on page one? Or, you know, or they would just leave without even letting you know. So I think definitely trust has to come in. And yeah, just- and, and I, I, oh, there you go. You did it. I was going to say, let's pull up uh, Doug Baumwall's um, comment because it's, this is spot on and this works really well too. As you just tell short stories is the best way to educate customers. You know, the sh- emphasis is on short, and I know that I'm I need to work on that personally. <laughs> but uh, if you can really hit home with 
any type of ex and, and this is where it helps being experienced. This is where it helps, you know, the name dropping helps too once in a while. Like, hey, have you heard of so and so? Well, I interviewed them and you know, now I'm building trust, but I'm also giving you something valuable. Um, that's where it helps. I mean, that's where like guy, people again in our in that liaison kind of role can really get out there and you do your networking, you participate on social, you know, that for for us, that's what social is. It, the social media part for us is a lot more of networking and learning, so that we could take that back to our clients and help them like rock the house, and you know, then they're going to refer us because honestly, like I mean, I wrote my books and all that was just for branding and things like that. But you know, I'm not going to make a living selling books for two ninety nine a piece. I'm just not. So I don't sell that. You know, I sell something completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another another follow-up question is if you're moving on with different tools and we talked about in the green room you know before we go live we call that the green room we were talking about the idea that maybe tools aren't the things you wanted to focus on so much as more of the techniques but I do have a question for you are there certain tools that you have found yourself not using anymore that you used to kinda rely on as things have changed for you um yeah I you don't have to name specifically unless you want to. Um, you know, just say the type of tools or something. No, that that uh, thank you. I appreciate it. We don't want to out anybody because there's you know everybody's got a, a great fit. Um, there's great fits for everybody um, with the tools. But I found myself and you know moving, uh, changing the way. Let's say I do document storage. Definitely did not expect myself to be one of those cloud people down the road you know, five, three, four years ago. Didn't expect it, but I'm doing it more. Um, and I think part of it is because I'm a lot more mobile, and another part of it is um, it just it seems to be a little bit easier for collaboration. And collaboration, obviously, is important for me because I'm building a network of people that are helping with different things. Um, I'm, I'm still looking for a really good, not a CRM, but a a tool that allows me to like how do we best describe this like some if if someone were to follow someone were to follow me on a social network like let's call it LinkedIn I'm you know I'm kind of into Google Plus I get that this place but I'm not so much on other ones right if someone were to follow me on Twitter and that was a big deal for me to get that person to follow me on Twitter but I have no clue it would be really nice to have a tool that said hey you should pay attention to this guy you know like or this girl like this is a big deal that so and so just followed you on Twitter or on LinkedIn or whatever because they have a huge network that could help you with your business goals like my goals would be to reach bigger clients and and get them to you know get some eyeballs from them on and their marketing managers on some of the things that I know a lot about and that could help them with their businesses and uh, so having tools like that would be really nice I'm still looking for them but that's one of those things where like you don't know what you don't know you know I mean how does a tool gonna understand what I'm looking for and be able to deliver that kind of you know intelligence to me. I maybe they maybe they're around on like enterprise grade platforms, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> you know, in the meantime, it's it's just I find myself out there a lot more in the streams, the various streams, just connecting with people, and that helps. But that's my business. That's my job. Yeah, so. Christine, I think I think you had a question about time and um, how how are we doing this? So time management of for a small business owner or medium-sized business owner, how do they deal with the time, right? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, like you said, and, and Jeffrey uh, Dodd um, quoted you, yes, they surely don't know what they don't know, so trust is the essential ingredient. Um, you know, for a small business owner, this can just all be completely overwhelming. You know, um, where should they be? Um, how much time should they spend? What, what is going to be most effective? Um, if someone was just starting out, what advice would you give them? You know, do they need to hire somebody that's already been there, done that, to kind of guide them? Can they take a crash course? Or, you know, should they just start throwing darts at the wall? What, what should they do? Um, all right. I'm, I'm going to equate this to building a house. Because uh, I come from a family of home builders, so I know a little bit about this. But I was actually given some very good advice by a couple of different people when it came to um, uh, when we f first bought our house. I was looking to figure out what to do with landscaping, and a guy said the best money you're ever going to spend is in planning, because then you can tackle that plan in pieces. 
and you can say, I want to hire somebody for this, I want to hire somebody for that, I want to push this off, it's not important right now. Um, so there's my, and, and you would not build a house by going and just buying a whole bunch of two by fours and some sheathing and nails and hammer and just say, all right, let me go build this thing. No, you want a plan and you need a plan. So I think that if you can, and everybody can appreciate how a strong foundation is going to help your house stay up, you know, nice and strong. If you don't know the story of the three pigs, go look it up. But it's, uh, <laughs> I got little kids, you know, this that, stuff's on my mind. That's definitely a good one. I like that. But uh, but it's true, right? If you don't have a good foundation, no matter what you do, is not going to be sustainable, and you're not going to you're going to spend a lot of time. You might find success, you you may or not might not, but you're going to have a really hard time looking back and saying this worked or this didn't work, and and all in all, this was worth it. So you know, a lot of people get into the what is the ROI of social media and online marketing, and you know what? I don't know that it's completely you know transparent to like to quantify, but I think that if at least you have a good plan in place and you take the time and spend the money to understand what that means for you, then you can tackle it however you want. Um, you might say, hey, the first thing, the most important thing for us right now, we don't need the website redesign. We need that, we need that Google local stuff straightened out because that's really, really important to us. And um, you also might realize that there might be some other ways to skin the cat. There might be, you know, a better way to approach that one idea that you had and you thought maybe it was it was through uh, you know through direct mail, and somebody else said, well, maybe you should start doing hangouts. So there's a uh, without that plan, you really don't know where to allocate resources, and that that's business one on one right there. So is that something you do for your clients when they come? Do you help them create that plan? I imagine you help them create the goal first, and then the plan to reach that goal. Yeah, a lot of it is so, uh, some of it with the goal is we don't know what we don't know. But a lot of times, you know, it, it, it's just saying, what do you want to accomplish? And then an example I was giving the other day is, so let's say you want to, you say, all right, I want to, uh, you know, I want more sales. Well, how do you get more sales? And then, well, this is how I get more sales. Well, okay. So we keep walking that process farther and farther along until we can feel comfortable with, um, with the fact that we're kind of at the end. I was, all right, we can't, we can't beat this horse any, you know, anymore. <laughs> now let's start, all right, we, we kind of have that, there's something we can really zero in on. And then from there, let's start working backwards and saying, all right, how do we, how do we, everything I do, I want to be able to trace back to that. I want to be able to answer, ask myself a question before I do anything. Um, or if I have an idea, I want to be able to ask myself a question, is this relevant or whatever, and then go through a series, be able to go through a series of steps so that I know that everything I'm doing has purpose and that I can trace as much of it as I possibly can. Um, and so I think that's, you know, that's where we've been able to really help. And you know what I'm, I'm doing lately, this past year I started to make it a more of a formal process, but even when it comes to web design, I don't want to design your site yet. I want to spend some time with you and let's create this process to the point where you have kind of like an RFQ and you have like a more formal proposal because one of the problems I find a lot of times is people come to me and say we need a website this is what we think should go into it this is what we think it should cost and you know now you're fighting based on you know you know you're competing based on costs and what their perceptions are of what makes sense for their business well that's not their business and so I'm going to try and help you understand what is going to make the most sense for you then you have that plan you can go wherever you want I mean obviously I'd like you to hire us but you can go wherever you want and have it designed, have it built. And, you know, the, whoever you end up hiring is going to be stoked when you hand them this document, you know, 15, 20 page thing that says, all right, this is everything we need and nothing we don't. And, you know, here's how we're going to build it out. God, any t if you're a web designer in the audience, tell me you wouldn't love to get a document like that. Yeah. Sheila says the landscaping an analogy is so good and she can relate. Yeah, a lot of it, uh, housing analogies when it comes to uh, um, anything housing related, you know, when it comes to your online presence, I think is a lot. It, it's, it's very good. Um, and cars too. Cars are good ones. Like you have to take care of your, your website's an engine. You've got to take care of it or else you find yourself having to pour way more money into it down the road. That's another good analogy. Mm -hmm. Good one. So we're as we're getting close to uh, wrapping up time, are there any specific things, Stefan, that you want to make a good point to that you haven't already covered? 
or maybe Christine, you have something you want to follow up with? We still have about 10 minutes. Remember, it's a 40-minute show now. Oops. So. <laughs> so, well, then, please, keep going. Uh, tell us about, now you're doing a new Hangout series. You're getting ready to start a new Hangout series, and you said that it's a goal-oriented Hangouts. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so it's about email marketing, which is one of the core services of my company. And back in the summer, I did a five-part mini-series, just sort of, it was like off the cuff with um, my friend Susan Finch. And we tackled, like we called it, if I had a nickel. And the premise being, if I had a nickel, you know, for every time I heard somebody say, blah, 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 when it comes to web stuff, um, so the idea was to help, you know, make website owners a little more accountable, give them some really great information. And so we had five of these things. And afterwards, I'm like, God, this is this is awesome because everything that we've done here can, first off, get repurposed, you know, out the wazoo. And, um, I mean, this half, each of these 35, 40-minute segments could create a lot of great blog content, but it all worked together because at the end of the day, you take this nice little package of five episodes and it helps you legitimately you know, really strengthen your um, your presence online and great actionable tips and things like that. So again, email marketing is a, a cornerstone service for us. Um, and so what I decided to do was find some more business. Um, you know, it's sort of a two-part thing for me because I believe that this kind of a concept will be um, is something that we can also offer com maybe larger companies who say, we need some content, we want to create, uh, we want to maybe utilize Hangouts so then you know this idea of a mini series that's built off of uh, off of goals and not just you know some of the feel good stuff that that a lot of us do our um, our hangouts for um, or blog content or whatever name dropping. Um, so I think that uh, you know that's what so that's what we're going to talk about. So I have four four experts lined up um, in this in this space. Uh, the first one's tomorrow. We're going to be talking about email marketing uh, and newsletters and what makes a great newsletter, things like that. Totally free. Um, and then from there, I will take all of that information and some of the social proof and all, repurpose it, put it in different strategically, uh, strategically put it in different places around the web, um, different parts of it or whatever, you know, do some video optimization and, and essentially just, you know, create just around that one episode, create a, a, a good core um, amount of content and then do it again for another three months. And my hope after all of that for my business is to have a lot of, really great information that establishes some trust, provides some really good DIY, you know, level um, insight, um, leverages other people's audiences a little bit, and ultimately says, well, you know, show me websites, this is the place to go to get, you know, have somebody build out uh, an email marketing system for me. Has the added benefit of being a proof of concept for anybody who wants to do this because it's, you know, it's sort of like, at the end of it, you could say, all right, proof is in the pudding here, guys. If you liked everything I did, I can do this for you. Um, but okay, well, that, hold on. Now talk about a little bit about how you're going to repurpose that content. And You said strategically place it all around the web. We want to know what are you going to do exactly and where are you going to put it exactly? I'm not giving you all my secrets. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I can tell you this. There are places like LinkedIn that are – that. Um, are a great platform for me to find potentially new, um, directly new clients or some build some thought leadership. So anything that comes out of that discussion tomorrow that is more in the thought leadership category, maybe that goes over on LinkedIn. Um, anything that, uh, you know, quotables, things like that, you know, there are great places online, visual places to put quotables, uh, quote graphics and um, and you know social proof and things like that. So I'm trying to do everything through a landing page, uh, as opposed to capturing it all in the Google Plus environment. Um, and that's only just because I know, especially for email marketing, I know that a lot of the the players uh, in the industry are they just don't even show up over here. So in this particular case, it makes especially it makes a lot of sense to go up onto a landing page. Um, plus, honestly, I did some A-B testing on my landing page initially, um, and I'm happy I did because I really just almost doubled the conversion rate. So you can't do that on a on an event page. So there you go. A lot of this is like, interesting. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it's 
kind of weird because in this particular case, it's pulling the the whole series is pulling double duty because it's it's not only you know used to dr hopefully drive some some business my way for email marketing, but it's also a phenomenal proof of concept for the the different ways that we can build out a uh, you know a series. But if you also check out PageFights.com, um, Unbounce does that. It's really cool landing page live landing page critique show. I'm modeling what I'm doing a lot after them. Um, and they really know their stuff when it comes to this. So, so with you doing the series, you get to do the traditional statement. You get to eat your own dog food, even though you were saying the proofs in the pudding. There might be some lumps there with the dog food. Yeah, yeah. If, if I, you know, in the email, in the in the little trailer I did, I'm like, hey, listen, this is this is about email marketing, so I'm not going to spam you. It would be pretty stupid of me to spam you, but who knows? There might be somebody that doesn't see the value after one or two episodes and says, forget about it. Well, that, that's okay. I don't mind. You know, I want this to be valuable and I want to attract the right people for this, you know, for this information. I also have another piece to it, which is a, um, uh, there's an opt-in, there'll be like an opt-in guide, like a PDF checklist type thing. And that's a great way to drive leads to your business. Um, I found that one of the challenges with that is people do that. They create this opt-in guide. They get a whole bunch of, you know, leads and then they don't know what to do with them. Now you're getting up on their email list for stuff that nobody, you know, is totally irrelevant. So I've kind of tackled that challenge and I've I'm putting the finishing touches on the complete opt-in the complete guide to creating an opt-in guide, which is going to be its own talk about pulling back the curtain. Like if you pay attention to everything I've got going on there, you're gonna be like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> I can do this. Sign or me up for that. You know, <laughs> I, that's I'm up to you. I'm famous for building email lists and then um, just letting them die off and never doing anything with them. So, so Stefan, is your complete guide going to not only show you how to build the opt-in process, but what to do once you've got the list? Yeah, yeah, and again, it goes through that whole step-by-step -step process of understanding um, why. Why do you want to do this? You know, what pain points can you solve? It talks about who. It gives you. Um, I have like a three-page checklist. Um, which three pages printed in sp spreadsheet format, but um, with all the different things you need to do to create this problem, the, you know, this whole thing. And, um, you know, and just, again, a lot more uh, narrative about what needs to get into, the, what, you know, needs to go into this whole thought process. Because, again, it's like I could take, like, say, say you're a hosting company, right? I could say, all right, let me cr let's create a little opt-in about 10 ways to, you know, 10 ways to know you're ready to switch to cloud hosting. Give us your email address, and then they give you your email address, and you're like, "Well, oh, all right, great. I have this checklist, but now what do I do?" And you're, you know, you start all of a sudden getting emails to like sales emails. Well, maybe I wasn't ready for that yet. So there's there's a whole bunch of information on what I think is the way to go about building trust. And you know, I've subscribed to enough of these darn things that I've seen what a lot of companies, even marketing automation companies who do this for a living, um, I've seen what a lot of them are. What I think where they're falling short and the thing with email marketing, and this is one form of it, is that you, I don't mean to go off track here, but um, one of the challenges, one of the things that I think people forget with email marketing, it's one-to-one -one communication. This is me in your inbox, you can reply, and you end up in my inbox. And so we have that one-on-one -on -one relationship, but I don't know that enough companies treat it that way, but that's what the expectation is. And the reason email marketing gets such a bad rap is because those expectations are not being met most of the time. So people who are meeting them are standing out in the inbox like rock stars. Um, and so, you know, and honestly, email is one of those places that's got the highest ROI of like every single marketing channel in existence. And there's a reason for it. It's because it's one-to-one. -one. So that's that's the scoop. Awesome. I don't want to release it all at the same time, though. It would have been totally confusing. <laughs> well, we've got one minute left, so um, give your calls to action. And uh, there are some questions in the audience that we didn't get to, if you could go back through and answer them. Yeah, definitely. Happy to, uh, to do that. So, all right. Well, I have a nice, simple call to action now, which is stepanhove.com, just like you see in my little, uh, no, this way, in my little uh, thing here on my lower third. Um, I finally finished it. I'm very excited. It's a nice little quick, here's who I am, what I do, um, how to get a hold of me, and little by little, I'm going to be building it out more um, on with just kind of bloggy type stuff, you know, more personal uh, 
personal behind the scenes things and you know a way because I post everywhere I'm all over the place it's kind of a central hub to be able to get to a lot of the things that I have going on so that's me and you know if you want to get on any of my email lists I think I have a link on there somewhere under the connect with me section so that'll help so I, I advise everybody to get on your list and see if you're um, walking the talk or talking the walk or whatever it is <laughs> I'm sure you are, but now they'll know for themselves. He'll be able to dish it out, I'm sure. <laughs> I can dish it out. Christ gotta... Christine, I totally forgive you. I know you hate email, so you don't have to go on there. I do. You know, <laughs> no, but she said she would opt in, like probably a lot of our viewers would, to your creating the opt-in opt -in thing. That'll That's be cool. I think it'll be pretty fun. I, I showed it to my father, who's you know as far removed from online marketing as he could possibly get, and... He read it and he was like, wow, I get this and this is pretty cool. I'm like, that made me feel good. So, you know, I don't want to toot my horn so much, too much, but I'll put, I'll launch that in the beginning of the year just because, again, I want to, it's crazy time of year and especially I don't want to confuse things with this, um, uh, with tomorrow's show. It'll just be too much. So that comes out in the beginning of the year. Very All excited. Right. Well, everybody be sure to RSVP for um, your first Stepan show tomorrow. He'll put the link in. And um, we'll, Ronnie and I will uh, see you back with TNT Boot Camp next year. Right, Ronnie? That's right. Next year, 2015. <laughs> All right. Have a good day.